Good morning all. Well, it's a simple teardown today. I've got this X-Sense DS51 carbon monoxide and smoke alarm. Now I'm going to do a review of this on my other channel, Julian's Reviews, but I thought I'd just take it apart because I'm quite intrigued to know what's inside. I'm expecting two sensors, a separate carbon monoxide and smoke sensor. I can't imagine that they're combined, but let's open it up and have a look. Well, the first thing that jumps out at you, uh, even before you take it out of its bag, is this. It runs on two AAs. Now, normally these things run on a 9-volt cell. I'm not very keen on 9-volt cells, so I'm quite interested to see that it runs on two AA. So that's 3 volts. Let's have a look further inside. Now, this is interesting. This says the smoke chamber using the principle of smoke particles reflecting infrared lights. Now, I thought smoke detectors and their probably are different ones, um, use some sort of radioactive material. But it looks like this doesn't. It uses probably an infrared LED emitter and receiver and just waits for reflections off smoke particles. And I wonder if that's also why it uses 3 volts. Well, let's open it up and have a look. Now, it has two audio, audio alarms. Smoke is DDD and carbon monoxide is d d d d d not that i imagine you'd hang around to work out which of the two alarm sounds it was i think you'd just get out regardless now that's interesting the three volt battery compartment has these odd springy things and it looks like it's designed to uh, when the batteries are not in there to stop you putting the cover on but it doesn't really seem to work particularly well. I'm going to have a look when I've opened it up whether they're connected to anything. I don't think they are. I think they're just physical barriers but this one's got trapped down in there. Ah well I've managed to untrap that one and it, it does now seem to stop the lid going on because I think the idea here is that you don't want to just put the cover on and make it look as though it's um, working and got batteries when it actually hasn't. So it's just a kind of uh, you can't put the cover on if you haven't put batteries in safety interlock. Right, okay, this is the inside and uh, I can confirm that there's nothing connected to these two springy cover interlock things. They're just physical. Uh, now the three volt uh, battery compartment just goes to this two pin JST connector and then it's all about this circuit board which is loose. So I'm gonna take that out now. So here's the circuit board. Now there's a chip here, U1, which is a Holtec chip. Um, I imagine that's a microcontroller. There's an MCP6002 there. I'm just going to look up what that is. Uh, there's a large piezo sounder here. Uh, you can see the, the disc there. And the plastic, I imagine, is designed to resonate and make this extremely loud. Uh, bi-colour LED here, a switch there which is the test and cancel switch I would imagine. Yeah, during alarming status, short press the test and hush button, then the detector goes into mute status, the LED keeps flashing red. Uh, yeah, so the MCP6002 is a microchip, low power uh, dual op amp I would imagine the 6002 is. And uh, the Holtec chip is indeed an 8-bit flash MCU with op amps and comparators. So let's have a look at the sensors. Well, there are just these two. We have, uh, what's that say? A Winson or Winsen, Win Sensor. Uh, oh, it's winsensor.com. What's the model of that? An ME2-CO. Uh, so yes, that's this thing. Uh, ME2CO works on the electrochemical principle, uh, electrochemical oxidization process of target gas on the working electrode. Uh, target gas are in direct proportion with its concentration while following the Faraday law. Hmm. It has strong anti-interference ability. Now it says low consumption there, but further down... It's got a load resistance of 200 ohms, so it can't be on all the time. It must be switched on and off. 
And then we come to the smoke detector, which must be this thing here. Now there are no identifying marks on it at all, but it does look like it has this filter, this sort of, oh, that's quite soft. This punched, uh, well, plastic, I assume it's now, I thought it was metal at first, uh, which looks like it's got a tongue locked. Actually, I think I should be able to yank that out quite easily. Let's give that a go. Yeah, so that's come off quite easily. And then it's just sort of, well, a chamber with lots and lots of interesting holes. I'm going to have to take this top piece off. I wonder how easily that will come off. Well, that came off remarkably easily. And uh, all it is is a chamber with these sort of uh, angled uh, pathways, I presume, so that light can't get in. And then there's uh, an emitter there, or possibly that's the detector. And the other one is there, so they're at differing angles and you can see on the underside there are the connections for the one uh, either diode or sensor and there are the connections for the other one so it's just a simple dark chamber so I've just been reading the Wikipedia article on smoke detector and it does seem that there are two types we have the optical type here with this sort of chamber and an emitter and a sensor and then the other type is the ionization type now the optical type says uh, it's a light sensor. The components of the light sensor are a light source, light emitting diode, a photoelectric receiver, typically a photodiode. And the ionization smoke detector uses a radioisotope such as americium, americium 241 to produce ionization in air. A difference due to smoke is detected and an alarm is generated. Um, Ionization detectors are more sensitive to the flaming stage of fires than optical detectors, while optical detectors are more sensitive to fires in their early smouldering stage. Well, I never knew any of that. Now, it also says here carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide detection. Um, and I think what they're saying here is that some smoke alarms attempt to use a carbon monoxide sensor to detect the characteristic products of combustion. However, sensors react on a level that are dangerous for humans, but not typical of a fire. So I think what they're trying to say here is that some sensors attempt to detect fires just through carbon monoxide, but this sensor uh, has the smoke detector as well. So it'll be interesting to uh, put this thing back together, attach it to the ceiling and see whether it's as sensitive as our existing smoke detector, which seems to go off if you uh, make toast or fry bacon. So I'll put it next to that and just see how well it performs. And uh, as for battery life, I don't remember changing the 9 volt battery in our other smoke alarm, certainly not in the last five years, and it still works because it goes off repeatedly. Um, but it'll be interesting to see uh, how long this one lasts with its double AA battery source. Anyway, that was a quick look at the uh, X-Sense smoke and carbon monoxide detector. Cheerio.